Right, welcome to another episode of the playing series. I'm in Portugal, landed a couple hours ago, and we've just got to West Cliffs. Now, today we're playing Praia del Rey, which is one of the courses here. And I'm playing with Iona, who you may have seen on Instagram. She's presenting for Sky Sports and also for Golfing World. So we've already played two holes and we start on 10. So we're on the 12th hole. And what I'm gonna do, it's gonna be a longer video than normal, is get every single shot for nine holes. So I've got warmed up, been on the range, on the 12th tee at Praia del Rey. So you can see a really, really nice golf course and nine holes of hopefully good golf. The first two holes that weren't on camera, knocked on the green in two on the par five, two part for birdie. Just lipped out for birdie on the last. Kind of lucky because it was off camera. So hopefully we'll carry the form into these nine holes and shoot a good one. Unfortunately, still got yellow balls. Just waiting for the white ones to come through. It's in the right, right bunker. The full swing, not the driver. Irons and wedges. <laughs> oh, it's recording. Yeah, we're recording already. <laughs> right, this is my playing partner, Iona. Hey guys. Do you want to introduce yourself um, formally? Well, you've done a job. There am Iona. <laughs> Was a golfer, still trying to be a golfer, but. You can mainly find me presenting these days. Okay. Yes. Playing to camera. <laughs> and she told me something on the second hole. So how, no, on the first hole in fact, how long did it take for you to get, well firstly, how long have you been playing golf? Just about six years. Okay. And you've already been a pro and now you're not a pro. Yeah, I've been due a pro. Due to injury. Terrible injury. And it took how long to get to, what was it, plus Four or plus three? Plus three. In? In two years. Two years. <laughs> but then, terrible wrist injury. So I made many mistakes. Too many balls off mats. Yeah. Too many steroid injections. Now I'm screwed. <laughs> so <laughs> lessons to be learned for everybody. Okay. The first two holes felt like a very promising start swing wise. Made a lot of good swings and uh, got that little fade that I'm trying to play at the moment with the low cut. That one definitely felt like the hands got a bit higher, got a bit stuck. Big flat right. But yeah, there's not a lot of room down this hole, so it's just two on off the tee. Should have like a little wedge in now. This rough is pretty juicy. <laughs> bit of, uh, wow. Bit of the memorial in that. Okay, we're live. That just adds pressure. <laughs> I should think so. It's for birdie. Not that first. Oh. Tidy little par. It's a par. Well, actually you're one under. Yeah. Technically. But they didn't see that. Yeah, I think it's over it. Sound the best. Go. Oh, that is not good. Nah. Alright, we've got chip techniques now from the tour. <laughs> the tour at which tour, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is it. I was I was just saying to James, this is a shot that Renato Paratori taught me at the British Masters a couple of weeks ago. He could obviously do it brilliantly, mm -hmm. like sending this ball 30 feet in the air and landing like dead weight. Yeah. But I mean it's helped me a little bit. It's worked for a first one. So, five right foot. For the first one. now you're on camera. Now, yeah. yeah, this is really matters. So, he just like opened up the blade a little bit, like, really got the bounce on the ground. And then he just said, like, he just kept saying, You want to go and um, stay down, keep your chest down, and like have nice speed through the ball. Yeah, but I also saw that the club head was like overtaking his hand, so he was like, So, he's releasing it, staying down, releasing it. And yeah, he's like, Just stay down, basically. If you stay down. Yeah, that was struck as well. Stopped pretty quick. Yeah, that'll do. A bit more like that. Yeah, that's stopping quick, isn't it? That's like up and down. Obviously, that's an ele elevated green, so it doesn't look as high, but need to practice that one. But tip from Renato. <laughs> that's a good roll. It's a good part, I'd say. Oh, freaking Yeah, but that's like downwind as well, isn't it? 
these greens that aren't there. I own a for birdie. Oh. I just keep seeing it, it's just not I think there. She's misread that one. Shocker. Another opportunity slips me by. I got a pitching wedge. For 180 yards. No, 165. 165. 165, and it's downwind, playing down a couple yards as well. Definitely. Yeah. So we're only playing like 155. Okay. And you can't go long, so. Not the best strike. Yeah, that's going to be a tough up and down. Right, not the best of strikes off the tee. Now we have. This is one of the hardest bunk shots you can play kind of like 25 yards 20 yards over a bunker it's just downhill downhill there's a it, you're gonna have to land this on the down slope yeah or long. i've not got the best lie either and i've got five foot of green to work with so <laughs> that's the excuses laid no, all right good. let's see it's heavy nah it's got like a massive clump of sand behind it but i like you I like there's no such thing as a bad lie in the bunker Okay. Nice. What a shot. That All right, is. we'll take that. That's a great shot. About as close as you can get it, I think. And it's coming back towards the pin. Oh, late backspin. Yes. That's absolutely quality. <laughs> We're live. This has got to be a break, and it's pretty downhill. Have you heard of the green reading method where you find the straight part? Yes. Yeah, and then you, you pick a point, like depending on how far away you are and how much slope there is. Exactly. Like, above, yeah. Yeah. I've, my, my coach Scott taught me that in the last lesson. Oh, yeah. I've actually found it's like really helpful so far. So, if you do you use your feet to find the. No, I don't do that. I just, I just scan around until I can see like a dead straight putt. That's cool. Um, which I'll see from pretty much here. And then I know that on that length part with this slope, it's pretty much there, that far past the hole. Okay. So I'll just see that from there. So you're basically going round the clock? Yeah. Just finding the, the straight part. And it's a good way of getting like a definite read from from like inside 10 foot. Yeah, I like that. See if it works. <laughs> Probably three inches outside. Easy. Stay there then. Alright, we got a chance. Nice. Another putt for birdie here. If I was putting for birdie on TV, what would you be uh, calling? <laughs> um, okay. We've got young James here. Young, I like that. That's a good <laughs> He's hit two great shots into this par four. Looks a little bit uphill with a touch of left to right. Oh, it's, uh, it's not the most confident stroke I've seen him make of the day, but he's tapping in for par. <laughs> Even younger, Iona. I'm slightly younger, just by a tad. Oh, oh yes, first part of the day. She's turned it round. <laughs> all starts here, all starts here. Iona's just come back from America. I have. Been doing the memorial? Yes, in Ohio. Actual presenting on Sky Sports. Scary stuff. This is the real deal though, the YouTube. <laughs> oh yeah, this is obviously more important. All right, so we've got 390 meter par four now. Haven't hit the driver yet today, but I feel like I'm swinging it well, so this is got to, uh, you can't be scared of it. The reason for keeping the driver in the bag mainly is because we can still hit a two iron like 270 um, with not too much run. So I find that driver sometimes is a bit of a risk, especially on tight courses, but looks like, yeah. Got loads of room. That is just, yes, low fade. No more high draws with the occasional 300 yard right drive. Let's see what you got. <laughs> Not a lot. <laughs> Mindset changes now, camera's on. Yeah, 
Yes, that is nice. Little fade. Beauty. Actually. It's fade. So I'm just right now. I'm aiming at the flag, okay. trying to hit a little fade. Into the way like yeah. It's a draft. <laughs> I need to go. I think. Oh, oh, it needs to go, but it was right on line. So, ended up leaving that short, spun off the front. It should be the most straightforward little pitch shot on the green. Oh, it landed off. It did, didn't it? It landed half a yard off the green. Oh, that's really bad. So we're back here with James on the 16th hole. He's left himself a bit of work to do here. Uphill, pretty straight from what I'm seeing. Yeah, sounds good. No, it does just tail away. Tailed off. First bogey of the day. He's got a 570 meter par 5. M meter? Yeah, it's 627 meter. yards. Driver, driver? Driver, driver. It's definitely driver. Yeah. Don't know how much room there is. Trouble up the right. So you can't hit it up there. Um, but it looks pretty wide, to be fair. So. Not there. Not seen that. Yeah. Great ball. Oh, First thoughts are not too positive. Mm. Mm. Well, ever the optimist, I think you're probably... You are very optimistic. <laughs> you're probably just nestled in this little bit over here, I reckon. Yeah. Should which be fine. Which, uh, which bit? Probably like there, I'd okay. say. Just I didn't really look. see it off the tee, but... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> didn't see it, but you know, it's fine. But I reckon, based on... It was just like a massive draw, was it? Yeah. Yeah, not a hook. Not a hook, just massive draw. <laughs> um, yeah. I think that seagull saying it's out of bounds. <laughs> we did. Not looking good. Nah, it's done. Not, Not a lot of room. It's done you here. <gasps> to be fair, competition playing six thirty into wind, it would have probably be two iron two iron wedge all day. Yeah. But it was quite a narrow tee shot, wasn't it? it? Yeah, it is tight. Especially when you got this stuff. Three one of your irons looks like a pitching wedge. Well as in they are so thin. Like literally the thinnest irons. They are blade They're beautiful, blade aren't they? blades. They're like butter knives. Just fancy hitting them. <laughs> Absolutely not. <laughs> My hands and wrists are hurting just looking at them. Like genuinely, the nine iron looks like a one iron. <laughs> that is ridiculous. Are they old or new? <laughs> I thought you'd ask that. Everyone says that when I get them. When they, when I get them out, they're brand new, pretty are much. They? Three months. They've got the raw finish. That's cool. So they go. Do you like that? I love it. Yeah. Because. They've been getting mixed reviews. It's like vintage. It is cool. I, isn't it? I like it, and Good. that's like I'm into that kind of like. You got style. Old school. Yeah. But when you play with some men, like they're like, oh, what's what, what, what's happened to them? Really? Are they are they diseased? <laughs> no, I like them. But like, it, if you saw this bag like sitting outside a clubhouse, you'd be like, proper golfer. Yeah. Like, ouch, proper ball striker. One twelve. We got fifty six. And the wind's not, if anything, it's maybe slightly into. Not that. Why are you going there? Oh, it's just a horrific shot. So this is a perfect opportunity to display your short game skills. Display my magnificent short game. Talk me through the process. Um, okay. So we've got 56. Mm -hmm. Which should be not the best of life. Just about the right club. I'm trying to pitch this literally just onto the green. Onto the green? Yeah, it's uphill and uh, the green's sloping, so pitch it around here. So you're going to pitch it into the upslope? 
ju maybe just over the upslope. Okay. And that should give it, there should be enough check on this, but the lie is not amazing. Oh. It's a spinner. Let's see if I can roll this down. Great approach shot in from, how far was it? One, 150. 150. Gonna go. That was not not out the middle of the butter. My confidence is not there. It's gonna move quite a lot at the start of the putt, I think. Yeah. Oh my god. So that's moved. Yeah. That's two foot. Right, last hole was definitely course management. 630 yards tight is just three iron, three iron wedge all day. Not hit driver hard, hook it, out of bounds. But yeah, got a few holes left, so we'll try and make a few birdies back. You good? Yeah. Stay there. So what got you into presenting then, and how did you go about getting to where you are now in, a, in quite a short period of time? Well, I played a lot of hockey and then I started playing golf and so it all came quite naturally. Um, but then I did a lot of practice on mats because I was, felt like I was catching up and I mm -hmm. was like, the time was against me. So I was like, got to hit more balls, more balls, more balls. And I had very mobile wrists, had yep. hypermobility in my wrists. Okay, so, so you can like dislocate your wrist type thing. Yeah, yeah they were so okay. mobile. I mean, this one's not got any mobility anymore. But so um, unfortunately, I paid the price for that and I started getting quite a bad wrist pain. And then I had an operation to see if I could get rid of the wrist pain. That was shortly after I turned pro. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, it's just been a real battle for me ever since. And after the wrist surgery, I thought, right, this is it. You know, I'll get finally put this risk saga behind me and I'll be yep. able to focus on playing well and it just didn't really hasn't really panned out like that yet so I stepped into doing some media stuff and um the start of the year I was, became the presenter for Golfing World yep. and just doing some stuff for Sky Sports Golf now so um early days of my presenting career and obviously it wasn't what I wanted to do I wanted to be a player and to play but I just a uh, bit of bad luck and made some mistakes and now yeah. I unfortunately I've got a lot of wrist pain I can only play like a couple times a month I'm not playing too bad today yeah still a little golfer in there deep down but so the the gig the original one the golfing world yeah was that through having a bit of a social media profile yeah, yeah. and then moving on or did you like approach them did they approach you no so I last year when I was recovering from my surgery I did a lot more on social media mm -hmm. and I wasn't really I wanted to be away from golf because I was so upset that I couldn't play so I was doing things like triathlons and I was talking a lot about my rehab and my recovery yep. and a little bit of golf but not really because I couldn't play and but I grew a bit of a following through that and then I did some work for Sky Sports Golf social media stuff at the British Masters last year and I grew my following grew a little bit more off the back of that because yeah. I was doing the Sky Sports and the Sky Sports Golf pages and Sky Sports have got like 3 million followers or something wow. so I picked up quite a few followers off the back That'll of that. Help. That did help. And then at the end of December, Golfing World, which is an IMG production, they just got in touch with me and asked me if I would go for a screen test. And never, honestly, never in a million years did I think I would have a chance of getting the job. And fortunately, they were looking for someone that had a bit of knowledge about the game. Yeah. And because I'd been a real student of the game, I'd like really studied it and know the game inside out. And Obviously, everyone's always learning, but I think they were looking for a female presenter that had a bit of knowledge about the game. So I was just really lucky because I definitely wasn't the most qualified and not the best presenter that went for the job. But they took a chance on me, so hopefully, yes, yeah, enough. I can prove that they've made a good choice. Get out that lie. Dog it out. Oh, that's gone. Oh no! Down the hill. Good chance for an up and down. Yeah. Spin. 
spinner. Go. Where do you see this? It's, this is like, I'm not sure whether it's going to move left or right. It looks dead straight to me. Yeah. That would be why. <laughs> it looks dead straight. Straight I, I think, yeah. Kevin nodded. Oh, yeah. Way. Finally, well we actually hold some putts. Close. Not bad. Uh, it's got one four five. Wind's pretty much dead. This is just stock wedge. Try and picture just on the green again. Yeah. Let release. I think a 50 degree should be the club for that. But they're kind of unpredictable. I think it doesn't ever release as much as you think. No, it's got to fly it like a good few feet on the green, I say. Okay, let's give it a go. Like See how right. it's so spinny. Spun right. Yeah, yes. that's right. Another good part. Scrambling for parts. Two great parts in a row. So what are you saying about me being humble? <laughs> <laughs> no, well I'm just saying that like you hit such a good golf ball but you, it seems like sometimes you don't have loads of confidence. You know, it seems like you lack a bit of confidence in mm -hmm. your game and then you get closer to the green and you can see you don't have like, like this is going to be an awesome shot. Yeah. Whereas like, I'm not saying to be arrogant, like it's not n not nice to be an arrogant golfer, but yep. I think if you s you need that sort of grit. Like an air of, yeah, grit or confidence. Yeah, an air of confidence or just like you really mean it, like you're really going to make a swing with full intention mm -hmm. and then and then walk away from the shot going, did I really like commit to that and see the process through yep. and then base your performance on that rather than any sort of outcome okay so like stand behind every shot and pick out your landing spot or pick out your target and then commit to that and then after the shot be like did i did i absolutely commit to that yeah and have and, that as the yeah rather than like not really knowing gone? what your intention is say around the green and then feeding into that la lack of confidence because you've maybe hit a really good shot but you just didn't have like a good landing spot and yeah. you're kicking yourself and you're beating yourself up for the wrong reasons because you might have hit a really good shot but yeah. you just didn't have the right landing spot or and the only reason I'm saying this is because like I was saying to you that I did some work with Dave Allred and I was fortunate to interview him at um, the world match play in Mexico mm -hmm. and he was talking about his work with Molinari and what amateurs I was saying what could amateurs learn or, or anyone professionals that want to improve their game learn um, about how to practice more effectively yep. and he was saying to start with you should only ever work with five balls at a time and work, bring your practice into groups of five balls okay. and so because that way you get to reset after every fifth ball you get that first ball again and on the golf course you only ever get one ball yep it's true so the first ball is the most important and then you get four bonus balls but then you start again you reset and you do it and then he was talking a lot about this balance between hum like being humble and having grit and it's yep. a very rare combination he says Molinari is the perfect example of that yeah you can he's, see that he's very humble he doesn't you wouldn't describe him as an arrogant pl no. person would you? but he's definitely got an air of confidence carrying him hasn't he and you can see he means it and if something he's really focused i watched him for the whole of the final the final two rounds at the masters and obviously like didn't pan out for him there but right up until that 12th hole he was just so focused but not arrogant just like and dave describes it as this mean it he says he it's called mean it yeah and he says, you've got to have mean it in your body language in the way you swing the club it's not arrogance it's not being cocky it's just meaning what you're doing and mm -hmm. having like real control and you're in control ultimately of of certain things and then other things on the golf course you'll never be in control of gust of wind or hits a pipe or but the things you can control like really mean them yeah and and just go for it so commit to what you can do yeah and exactly then, yeah so this guy might have to um <laughs> <laughs> That's another one of your contacts, is it? Dave, oh, no, he's the hardest man in the world to pin uh, okay. down. 
he... Well, it sounds like he's working with some... Uh, so he worked with Johnny Wilkinson. Yeah, he was Johnny Wilkinson's kicking coach up yeah. until they won the World Cup. Is that who gave Johnny Wilkinson the pre-shot? The pre-kick routine? Yeah, the pre-kick routine. He oh. wrote a book called The the, Pre the Pressure Principle, which you can get, um, and it's got some of his drills and techniques. You can apply it to like any sport, but with mm -hmm. the kicking, for example, he used to get Johnny to pick out someone in the crowd through the stands. Yep. Once he's picked out that woman, or for example, he then, there was a woman that they did it in this training session, He's like, right, now pick out something on that person. Right. So he picked out the ice cream cone. And then Dave was like, right, now pick out something on the ice cream cone. Yeah. So he picked out the flake. And it's like, that was the target. It wasn't just, and, and Dave would always say that on the golf course. Like, okay, you're aiming at that tree, but which branch? Yeah, I remember reading Bob Road Telebooks and it's the same thing. Yeah. Like, find the smallest possible target. Yeah. But then what Dave, Dave, if you ever see him at a tournament, he's, he's walking around, he's always got a notebook. And even in the interview, you can see on YouTube that I did with him, he's, he's got a notebook. He said to me before the interview, he said, I've got to hold a notebook because I feel uncomfortable without a notebook. Because he's always writing stuff down. And what he's writing in there is he's, he's scoring Molinari on his mean it. So okay. not on the outcome, not on the outcome. He's saying to Molinari, like, Did you, how, how would you rate your commitment to that shot and out of five? And, and Molinari might go with five, and Dave will just note it down. And then that way it's it's totally process focused, not outcome. Yeah. And it's great, it's really good, I think. I think it's good stuff. All right, this is James's caddy here. Okay. Just, Got par five. On the bag. Can't promise you too much money yet. <laughs> Right, this looks like a good shot. So, ball above your feet. Yeah, 212. Across from the left. Downhill. Bit of fly lie. Yeah. I think it's a little six rather than a seven. Sounds good. Get up. Go. Alright, owners just bombed it. <laughs> the only bomb of the day. <laughs> One four five in. Yeah. Par five. Go on, release in. And focus camera. Oh yeah. Oh wow. That's close. I'll take it. If that's pin high, <laughs> that's like two foot. It's gone way too long. Right, firstly Iona's just hit it to a foot, not two. Um I didn't even do you know there was a bunker there? You saw the bunker? Yeah. That's going to be an unbelievable short game shot. That's pretty much impossible from there. A lot of knee flex coming up. <laughs> I might Adam Scott it and leave it yeah, in. Yeah, go on. Finish with Eagle. Yes. Yay! What up? Two back. Happy with that. It's on a downslope. Quite a fluffy lie. Bunker in front. Downslope towards the pin. Probably... 10 foot of green to work with. That's why you need Ken on the course. <laughs> How are you going to play it with this sort of a lie? To be honest, so it's not sitting amazing. I can't really... You've got, a, you've got to uh, Renato Paratori it. What, from here? Like, open it up like a frying pan. You've got to open it up, but then also get the slope and then like release it on the line of the slope. Yeah, so you've got to probably keep your weight more on your right foot a wee bit. A tiny bit. I don't know. You know, you can feel it. This is going to be epic. I this can feel it. Not be epic. Let's see the mean it. All right, let's see the mean it then. Right, so I'm committing. There's literally nothing from there. <laughs> There was about one out of ten minute in that. So hard. <laughs> but this could very well go in the hole. Very nice. That is a great golf shot. Beautiful. We'll take that. Yeah, very nice. I think I can give you that. I think that is probably a gimme. For your birdie. Par. Par. Very nice. James, it's been a pleasure. Four